Hurricane Dorian has been reclassified as a Category 3 storm, down from Category 4, which means the hurricane can now fit into its old skinny jeans. <laughs> that cute joke. Mm. <laughs> Florida has declared a state of emergency as Hurricane Dorian approaches. By the way, the last emergency that the state of Florida declared was a frightening shortage of flaming hot Cheetos. A Houston man pulled a gun on employees at a Popeye's because they'd run out of chicken sandwiches. Police arrived and quickly arrested the Popeye's employees for running out of chicken sandwiches. <laughs> I love that one. Mm, me too. <laughs> the Trump administration plans to roll back regulations on methane emissions, which is a major contributor to climate change. Poor Melania. The planet will soon be too hot for her to wear a coat made out of baby bunnies. And finally, Congress may be getting closer to obtaining President Trump's tax returns. I'm sorry, this just in. His tax returns have been found dead in a New York jail cell. The Trump Report oh, starts now. Geez. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz Wow, that's loud. Welcome <laughs> to the Trump Report. Here we are reporting on all things Trump and beyond. I'm Christian Blatt, joined by Chelsea Galicia. Hi. Do I do this and then <laughs> pass the baton? Yeah, let's pa the yeah like <laughs> pass it on. Meow, meow, meow. Hello. <laughs> are we playing this game? Sure. Tell <laughs> the telephone. <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover, let Tamara take over. And of course, Scott that's Moore good. at the end. Now, right. so many places to start, but let's begin with the most significant. At last, our long national nightmare is over. That's right. We will have only a single night of debate for the next <laughs> round of debates, thank God. It'll only be 10 candidates, that's fine. And it'll be next Thursday, September 12th. So you will not find this show next Tuesday, but you will indeed find it Thursday, sometime after the debate. Maybe ten o'clock. So you know, just subscribe, and you'll it'll show up magically overnight. If uh, if you're not mm -hmm. uh, up late, still, still just so upset that Bill De Blasio wasn't part of the debate. But uh, <laughs> Tamara, uh, I I wanted to get your thoughts first. Mm -hmm. Interesting. On... Wow, I feel honored. <laughs> It'll be the only time I talk to you the whole show. I just wanted to get it out of the way. He's gonna now. ask yeah. me what my favorite color is. <laughs> What is your favorite color? No. So, is there anyone that you're like, oh, I really wish that they were still on the debate stage? Mm, well, Marianne Williamson. Mm. Not there, right? Funny yeah. you should mention that. Did, yes, continue. Did she read our text? Second in. <laughs> I hope not. Um, because, of course, you know, my job during the debates is to live tweet the silliness. So, uh, without Marianne Williams in there, it's just, there's not going to be enough use of the word love. There's not going to be enough use of the word gratitude. This, I mean, this, is, this Amy, is not okay with me. Amy Klobuchar has a lot of love oh, in her yeah, heart, yeah. don't you think? You know? I, she doesn't express it as eloquently. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that's Marianne's right. ability to speak eloquently is no joke. I'm, I, I'm, I agree. I, I am kidding, but she does do very well with. Well, Chelsea and I were trading messages last week, and Chelsea was the one who knew that this was uh, such an important issue for me. And uh, I believe it was, whatever the day of the deadline was, the next morning. Wednesday. I had a, yeah, it was Wednesday. Wednesday I had a morning for me, a, a text in the morning. I was like, oh, Chelsea's up early, and I was like, oh my god, it's great news. <laughs> but. You were just like, yeah, but Marianne's not there. And I agree that, I think we all agree, it would be a better television show that we all have to sit and watch while we do homework for the Trump Report. We should have Marianne Williamson on that stage. Don't you agree, Chelsea? Absolutely. And what should we do? What can we do to make that happen? Probably nothing, but for a the petition. sake of argument. Every, okay. A petition. So where where would we find such a petition? No, Schneikes. Oh, I haven't boy, thought we're going to have it. <laughs> That's a problem. She's but like, here's well, the thing. I have a, I have a website Schneikes. right now that I'm making. <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll tell you where to find it. Yes. Uh, at the end, but so we wanted to swap. Yeah, well, there, I would swap. Ooh, that's the question. Well, we'll ask everybody. Let me. We know who we both agree on who we would swap out, and let's just. I'll 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 run through the list very From quickly. From the panel here. Yes. So Marianne Williamson <laughs> is going to replace one of us, yeah, one of and she'll be here every week. <laughs> That'd be so great. out of the out of the the uh, people on the debate stage, we have to take one of them away. Mm. So we have Amy Klobuchar, uh, Klobuchar. Cory Booker is fine. <laughs> Cory Booker, Pete. Mayor Pete, uh, Bernie, Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Andrew Yang, Beto O'Rourke, and uh, Juan Castro, not Julian Castro. I know who I'd take out. So who would you take out? Who, me? Tamara, yes. Andrew Yang. 
<gasps> no. no. Are you kidding? I Why? saw. No, I literally no, saw somebody no. running in Burbank today with a Yang Gang yeah. shirt on, and he I was like, "That guy gets on it." On the move. Are you serious? Uh, no, yes. I'd like to see him That's in there too. Okay. Go, go listen. <laughs> I know you probably have not ever heard the Joe Rogan podcast no. before. It's probably not a, a place online you <laughs> so, frequent. All right, so she probably just doesn't like weed. It's okay. But but yeah. you should listen to that. Um, well, that for me was when I first heard of him and really got to hear him out and thought this guy is on to something. And even, you know, in the, in the polls, he's at like 3%, which is higher than, I mean, Kirsten, he out lasted Kirsten he Gillibrand. Out, he out Gillibranded yeah. her. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, he yeah, is well, definitely, he's got something. He's more on I mean, brand than Kirsten Gillibrand. You want to put $1,000 in everybody's pocket, I suppose. Well, but, that speaks to people. Well, but that's not actually the most convincing part if you look at why he's saying that we need that. Because he wants people to vote for him. That's why I he's actually, saying it. And I actually don't think that's well, true. Well, he has said that he would rather somebody else take up his cause, but exactly. I don't think he's, right. he's, he's not declining his spot on the deba debate because, stage. Because, uh, because nobody else has picked up the cause yet. All right. If somebody does, I could, he, he might ba well, bow Well, somebody okay. that was okay. so higher in the polls. Who else, would, who else would? Who else would you Well, yeah, Scott. We, Chelsea and I again. We know our answer. It's the same answer. So, Scott, oh, who no. would you? Uh, probably Beto. Oh, he's Beto now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, oh. so the three of us agree. Actually. Yeah. Oh, you okay. guys too. We're yeah, because yeah. it was. It, but there was like there was no de no deliberation. It yeah. was like yeah, just kick Beto out. I could because, see that too. For me, it's a toss up. Beto yeah. and Yang. Yeah. Oh, oh my no, gosh, no, not, not even. Not want Yang in <laughs> but too. but I mean, maybe just to be contrarian now, maybe I would replace. Marianne with Julian Castro, mm -hmm. and I guess isn't that it Juan Castro? No, it's no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trying me. to. So, I know I was trying to do that earlier, but nobody bought it. I, I was like, no, it's Juan Castro, <laughs> not Julian. And no, uh, Julian. Nobody stopped me. Now so. after after this, can we go down the row and do Mary Fuck Kill with the panel? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. Yeah. Oh can um, I kill all of them? Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. That's something that the secret. That's a joke. The secret yes, service joke. is going to show up at my house. <laughs> no. It is just a joke. So yeah. So we would we would uh, we would we would marry. Uh, have sex with, which really takes the the fun out of the name of the game, yeah. and then you know, just uh, let's say uh, we would insult instead of uh, we wouldn't kill anyone. But uh, boy, that's a hard game with, uh, Ooh, with these ten. That is, know. oh man. Um, I mean, I, oh, I'd man. have to marry Mayor Pete. I mean, I know oh, he's married. I'm yeah. married too. But uh, you know, there's. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm just looking at everybody, and I'm like, nope. That's uh, who. Who are you gonna have the most fun with? Who are you gonna? Who do you want to go on vacation with? <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. <laughs> no, because no. I want it to be vacation where I relax, not a vacation no. where I'm like, like, I'm like saving badgers who are like soaked in an oil spill. <laughs> I feel like, and by the way, good work. Somebody should do it. Not my vacation, no. right? You don't no. like intellectually stimulating conversations on your vacation? Have yeah. you seen this show? <laughs> do you, do, is that what you think I'm in it for? Is yeah, the yeah. intellectually See, Mayor Pete will have intellectually stimulating conversation and also a great hors d'oeuvres platter and lots of... <laughs> Fun games too. What are you trying to say? That he throws a good party? For sure. Uh, <laughs> Come on now. And you know, look, Biden would be kind of fun. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's just uh, well, let's put it this way: he would. <laughs> you he, have to introduce yourself to him ten times. <laughs> 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 look, some would say he's on vacation already. Right. That you could know? be fun. So that would be fun. But mm -hmm. uh, instead of the game that Tamara wants to play, it, all right, let's continue the silly conversation uh, instead of uh, anything else. Who would you most like to go on vacation with? Is it Elizabeth Warren for you, Chelsea? And yeah. Chelsea has the benefit. She's looking at everybody right here because I didn't want to forget <laughs> anyone. She's a um, cheat. Yeah, that, 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 because I want to talk to her about why she's going to make the best Senate majority leader ever. I don't think she's interested in that conversation yet. <laughs> she she will be in February for sure, but I don't think right now she's ready to have that conversation. Uh, Tamara, uh, perhaps a vacation with uh, Kamala Harris going down to the border and uh, you know just no. trying to get people you know without having them kicked back. No, across. we're saying vacation. Okay. So like this is you know I understand I understand you want to have you know like a um, productive you know conversation intellectually stimulating conversation. Mm -hmm. So but who are you going to Club Med or Hedonism? With. Well, Mayor Pete. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Clearly. All right. And uh, Scott, uh, you going on vacation with Beto? Uh, Don't let him drive. 
<clears throat> I think it might have to be Biden, just because I think it would be a goofier, uh, you know, sillier. Look, the selfies you would get <laughs> from that vacation. I could just see you guys in Florida already. <laughs> exactly. See? So, yeah. He's like, I don't know why, I don't know why plane tickets were so cheap. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, this is a really important question. Let us know in the chat of the the ten Democratic candidates that are debating uh, next Thursday, September twelfth. That is uh, eight p.m. Eastern on ABC, uh, Univision, and I don't know what TSU is, but I assume that's the university it's at. So uh, maybe they're on campus yes, uh, it is. network. Texas it's Southern. on. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, ABC, you've all gotten. We've all gotten Univision too. Which um, Univision. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad you said Wherever. it. Uh, but this does bring up also a silly question, but one that I alluded to a couple weeks ago that I wanted to get to. Who do you think will have the most annoying fake Spanish? That they speak because Univision's there. They're gonna be. They're gonna be in a rush to answer with as much Spanish Whose as they can. Whose name rhymes with Cato? Starting with you, Scott. Uh, he's not gonna be good, but uh, Cory Booker's not gonna sound great either. No. I, I don't. I don't feel good about that. Uh, I don't feel good about either. Either. I, of them. I, I. I don't feel like my. Well, I can't speak for all Mexicans, but I don't feel like my fellow Mexicans are very impressed by that. I. I. I don't think that they feel that they want to be catered to mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. Talk about the the issues. And I think most of them want to see themselves as middle class. I think when they um, think that they're speaking to, you know, minorities, Mexicans and Central Americans, that when they talk about things um, that are the, talking to them as though they live at the poverty level, it actually undermines, I think, um, the understanding of where they are. Right. I mean, these people need to go to Downey, which is the Mexican Beverly Hills. Did you know that we have such a place yes. here in LA? Well, I've been to Downey because the first franchise McDonald's was there and they have a little museum there. So yes, yeah, yeah. so I have and been that, to Downey. That's where my, my mom's whole whole family lives. And, so, and many, you know, Mexicans and Central Americans are, are doing well, that are politically in, involved, engaged, are doing well and they want to be spoken to like they're in the middle class and that sure. these candidates are looking out for the middle class. And when they talk to them as like, they just barely crossed the border, they don't know English yet, mm -hmm. and they're just talking about the social safety net with them, they're missing the mark. So it makes me cringe, not just because they're Spanish and their accents are bad, but because they're <laughs> missing the mark on where to speak to them. So if he says, hola, me llamo Beto, you're gonna be like, no, Beto, no. stop. Yeah, because he, he shouldn't. Uh, but. <laughs> It's to me. It's like uh, sounded like it, Dora. If, <laughs> <laughs> How do you know my aunt Dora? <laughs> Literally have an aunt. She's Dora. an explorer. The uh, it, it's like if you've ever been in a restaurant with someone. Like I, I have, I have a friend who lived in Japan for a long time. So at a Japanese restaurant, he likes to show off and order in Japanese, and they'll always answer him in English because they're just like, no, stop. And I've yeah. seen that at a French restaurant, Italian yeah. restaurant, all the time. It's like, yeah. just no, just stop. Like just, just, add, just order from the menu. I, 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 so it's almost like. Yeah, can you just order from the menu of telling us how you're going to make the country better? Like, don't patronize us. That's, yeah, you know, exactly. and if there were someone who it was, maybe they were uh, brought up in, you know, in a home where they spoke two languages or was their first language, that's fine. But, you know, the if Joe Biden is, uh, you know, yo quiero el presidente, <laughs> and then you're like, wait, I think you just said you like Trump. And, you know, he'd be like, no, that's not what I meant. I meant Obama. He's still president. I'm running against him. You know, it'd be a whole thing. So I think that nobody should speak Spanish, but you know that's not true. I'm with you on that's that. All, yeah, all, ooh, let's just take that sound bite of yeah. Christian saying, I think no one should speak Spanish. <laughs> just let that Followed by one. clips yes. of everybody. You know, what else, you know what would sound better? <laughs> Your clip of you saying it. <laughs> because you just quoted me. Oh, so you got me. If there will ever be a, qu a clip, it'll be that one. But anyway, so uh, we're all excited uh, for the debate. And uh, mm. I know Chelsea and I will be able to be here that night. Uh, I, I understand that uh, Tamron Scott is both it is past both of your respective well, bedtimes. Well, I was going to say I'm going to take a vacation after the three-hour debate because I'm going to need it. So Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> with here. Mayor Pete. Yeah. No, that's no, Biden. Tamra. Oh, I'm yeah, you wanted to go with Biden. That's right. Mayor I'm Pete's who I'm going to marry. <laughs> Stimulating conversations, and, you know. Look, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to convince me. Uh, all right, so... <laughs> We uh, we we had some uh, fun at the top of the show talking uh, about uh, Hurricane Dorian, and uh, we'll have a little bit more fun. But this, of course, is not making fun of the hurricane and the destruction that is done. I mean, just the uh, the footage that you've seen from mostly from the Bahamas at this point have been the terrible things. But 
were able to just kind of shake our head at a president who said, is a, is a Category 5 hurricane really a thing? I've never even heard of that. That I've heard of Category 4. Sure, we've all heard of that. But Category 5. And, of course, you know, there's times when the Internet is very helpful. And it, it's a moment where that happens and then within seconds you're like there were two category five hurricanes since he's been president and you don't even have to talk about the fact of like you know how many category five hurricanes may have passed through mar-a-lago and it it was just like so it's happened two times so um does he have any advisors anymore scott that that like (laughs) say anything to him i mean are they there does he just not listen or do they they just take a paycheck and they're like, yeah, this is a sweet gig. I don't even actually have to show yeah. up on Fridays. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening right now because you can already see you know, the new press uh, secretary. She doesn't do anything. She retweets a few things during the day, hasn't she, even had an actual and she makes press me, conference. She makes me miss Sarah Huckabee Sanders and, a lot, by the way. I, I almost I, miss Sean Spicer almost. I know, right? I because mean, like, it's just like... You find yourself going over to Dancing with the Stars yeah. Yeah. to get a Right, band. exactly. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, was, just... Just something, you know? Yeah, I, I, and I really do. I think at this point, you know, it was just like the whole thing from last week when he talked about, supposedly, from Axios saying he was going to try to nuke hurricanes to diminish their power. and then He, had he says tweet, he didn't say that. Like three or four times. So the more yeah. times he tweeted it, the more times you're like, okay. And and then they go on and talk about Alabama getting hit by the hurricane, which was never uh, In the an bath. issue. Uh, well, the, and, and let me just interject on in that because he said that it, it was going to hit Alabama after... The I don't know all, the Weather Channel, National Weather. Channel, everybody said like, no, Alabama's going to be all right. Here's some other places it's probably going to hit. And he's like, and I'm I'm really worried about Alabama, you know. Uh, and I don't think he's a college football fan, so I don't think it was a reference to that. So yeah, he, you know, that's I don't know. I mean, I think that <laughs> clearly but, neither are we because we didn't even notice. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so the uh, look, I heard a, I I heard a great theory uh, that uh, I've I've put out before for Trump. But uh, the the comedian Whitney Cummings, she worked on Roseanne Barr's show that Roseanne used to be on, but now isn't. Mm-hmm. And before she sent that out that tweet that got her in trouble, Whitney had the idea of let's just give her a phone that she thinks is connected to the internet, and it goes on like a fake Twitter, and she feels like she's tweeted. <laughs> so you know that could have saved well, really just her job. I think everybody still has a job on that show that wanted yeah. one, but. I mean, at some point, isn't this what what Trump should be doing? Yes. I mean, should, like two years ago, I yes. don't know, during the campaign, maybe. <laughs> do you do you, and and look, we've heard about various advisors, uh, Mattis among us, others have talked about just things that they've taken off of his desk so they don't want him to see it. Should they just put fake memos on his desk, let him send out fake tweets, and he doesn't leave the house sometimes? You know, he can he can just go right from the White House to the golf course. Is it possible? Uh, I I don't. Is it possible to just kind of put him as the little boy You're saying in the like bubble? An easy bake oven made like an uh, easy bake White House <laughs> Oval uh, Office. I mean, the same this, manufacturer. It, it, it has been a baked. little fake Oval Office Every, with the little plastic desk. And, everything yeah. since early 2017 has definitely been cooked by a little light bulb. You know, I mean, it's like yeah, it's like you could eat it, but should you? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's. He, he was getting into Twitter feuds with Grace from Will and Grace. I know her name's never messing. It's just yeah. funnier. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it's it, it's just like, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Chelsea, is is it is it too late? Can, can we not put him in a little plastic bubble and just let him kind of wander around? Uh, bit, no, or? but we could get rid of him through the 25th Amendment. I just thought I would throw that out, that maybe anybody oh. who's left well, with a reasonable right. mind. So the... Uh, the the Democratic-controlled Senate is, is who would do that, right? I don't even know how to respond to such... Well, that's lunacy. the only way it would happen, though. Demo- because if, the, if Democrats had the Senate, it was the only way that would happen. Well, this, the 25th Amendment... That's for impeachment. For yeah. the 25th right. Amendment, you need the, the, the cabinet... Too. Oh no! And we just talked about how it's a bunch of people who just come in and, and you get paychecks to not the do cabinet anything. to what they would be in charge. They the, that would be up to them. It's not a Congress thing. Mm-hmm. But do you have a, enough cabinet members? You have a lot of acting. No, that's what we're saying. Yeah, that's yeah. The so I mean, I, I think we talked about this not that long mm-hmm. ago. So it's like you don't actually have enough cabinet members at this point. Maybe I think that's you the just whole plan. Take the ones that are there. I mean, th- listen, can an they- acting cabinet member and maybe maybe someone in the chat knows this. I, I don't know the answer. Can the, an acting cabinet member? The Constitution doesn't tell you. So Uh-oh. you you just kind of have to do well, it. Well, then Rand the- Paul says it's not going to work. If it's mm-hmm. not in the conver- if it's not in the Constitution, you can't do it. That's, That's why not- he has that haircut. That- <laughs> <laughs> I got you to laugh at that. That is <laughs> 
I mean, but the people who say that have never read the Constitution because most of the rights that they claim to have mm -hmm. are not in the Constitution either. Have you read the Constitution? Yes. Oh, good for you. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm glad you have. I've read, I, you know, I, I knew I knew some of the amendments when I was in high school, but, uh, yeah. you know. Go, you, there's a Constitution in, in law school, and then we go through all the amendments, well, most of them. I mean, we don't talk about them, like, quartering soldiers. I mean, we go through <laughs> the, the real juicy ones in law school. That's what I'm there's right, probably yeah. a BuzzFeed list, Christian. Don't worry. It breaks them. <laughs> Which amendment are you most like? Right. I'm like the 21st Amendment. Let's party. See, I've already, uh, I've already written it. So, uh, all right. Anyway, uh, I referenced the fact that uh, President Trump is uh, warring with Deborah Messing. And uh, it's good to see that. Messing with Deborah Warren. No. Oh, snap. Oh. That he's, he can be friends with Kim Jong-un, but the real threat is, again, Grace from Will and Grace. But I, I, do, I did want to point out for a second, sort of this, this is something that came up not that long ago, just this idea of let's make public all of the people who are going to go to this Donald Trump fundraiser in Beverly Hills. That's what started this conversation. Mm -hmm. And you can argue with the notion of the president shouldn't be paying attention and following up on it. Sure, that part's fine. But it, especially when we see the way, uh, unfortunately, it, we, we haven't even talked about the latest shooting, you know, because there are so many shootings. And the way that people react when they get information, like these people supported Trump or these people supported, supported anything, do, and I'll ask you first, Chelsea, just from a, a legal standpoint, is it irresponsible to post like these are all people who donated or attended a fundraiser for this fairly unpopular candidate? And if you look it up on the website, you're actually going to have their home address. Well, the question, legally speaking, when you donate to a campaign, it is public record. Mm -hmm. Right. So the republishing of facts is covered by our First Amendment. Um, the but you can't donate anonymously, right? So because if you maybe didn't want this kind of attention, this is why you can't donate anonymously. Because then mm -hmm. you could do what you could do like a hundred anonymous donations and go past the uh, the uh, the minimum. Right, because when we used maximum. to believe that each person you know had had a voice, we we placed a. a, a a cap on how much money an individual could give to a campaign. Now we've kind of blown through that because of the super PACs. You don't donate, or you can donate the full amount to the candidate directly, and then after that, if you want to donate to them and exceed the limit, you donate to the super PAC that is supporting them. So, uh, but about the issue about home addresses, I don't, I don't think that is cool at all. I don't think that we're going to stand outside of, of people's doors and or, or worse, protest. you know, like, oh, here's this. Look, we know Kelsey Grammer is going to be at that fundraiser. So I'm going to use him as an example. He's going to be there. He's going to donate whatever the maximum I is. I mean, but most of these celebrities, there are addresses on the internet. Sure. Anyway. Well, but you're making, it, it, you're making it easier. That's sort well, of like the argument of like, oh, well, you know, if there's a three-day waiting period, people will still get guns. He's like, yeah, you're just making it harder. So if you're putting all these addresses in one place, that seems like it's making it a lot easier what we can well, say. Well no, I'd say one is most home addresses are not going to be used. They're going to use their attorney's office, their manager's office, their That's fair. production office. They're not going to actually use their personal home address for right. one. Uh and two, I, I, I kind of what Chelsea was saying though, it is public record. And if you're going to donate, then like we talked about before, you're going to have to acknowledge that you're it's going to be public record and for anyone to know. Um, and that goes for what we we're talking about before, when you make comments um, and and you're a public official or you're donating uh, to certain causes and you're known as a celebrity or public official, you have to understand that people could be upset by that because they're gonna have issue with it from the other side, and that's part of being in the uh, being a celebrity and be, is you're putting yourself out there, and so you have to expect those See, those type of things. Though. This is what happens though when we give all the political voice to people that have a lot of money. Then people mm -hmm. have to think of other ways to have a voice. And what they'll do is they'll then cancel those people that have a bigger voice than they do. And I think that's mm -hmm. what's fueling it. You know that these um, celebrity or, or other people, business people that are supporting Trump are getting a bigger voice in this democracy than you are. So you're going to undermine them. You're going to try and cancel them and try and get their shows canceled, try and hurt their businesses, because that's sort of what democracy in America has left us to yeah. do. What else, how else should a, 
a, a, an American sort of vote, how, besides actually voting uh, on the election day. But like, we know that if you get in front of the president, you're gonna, you're probably going, going to be able to influence him. That and the money that's behind you. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you are you alleging that politicians can be influenced by money? Oh my gosh, how many years have I? <laughs> but the, but I, this I, is I, I actually had a lot of trouble saying that. But, but, the, you know, but this I, I, is I the problem. I have to be proud of myself that I did. And go ahead. But this is why this is happening. So if you don't like that this kind of thing is happening, that right. we're posting people's mm -hmm. names, then help restore the true democracy where all of our voices carry the same weight. So we don't have to find weird, odd, you know questionable ways of evening the, out the playing field. Well, Tamara, to mm. the point that Chelsea made, she sort you of... You mean Bernie? You mean the point that Bernie made? <laughs> the point that mm -hmm. Bernie made there. Everybody no. should be on equal playing field over here. Well, the but the point that she was making about, like, yeah, so if somebody does donate to a, a candidate that you feel is bad for the country, you should be able to know about it, and if you want to protest their shows and things like that. But, of course, what I'm referencing directly is maybe a less famous person, like a, somebody who is, a, I don't know, a, a producer for a movie studio. They don't have a bodyguard and they don't maybe have like the most sophisticated security system that somebody has. And somebody maybe isn't looking to just protest. And that's sort of, that's why I find it troubling, the idea of let's just publish all these people. Like it's not, let's list the 10 celebrities who spend the most money and, and do this. You, let's think, list you think somebody would put their effort into going to a producer that they don't know, like somebody whose name they don't recognize or something like that. Well, they after, put their you, effort uh, after you realize you're not going to get over the wall at the first 10 names on the list, possibly. Or maybe you have 10 friends that you're like, yeah, let's go Let's go see what we can do. So you're afraid? It's, it's hard to say because I can't imagine like personally trying to confront because you, this question is you're assuming that like people are going to confront people if, I'm, if the I'm going to suggest, crazy I'm gonna suggest that they're going to murder them is what yeah. I'm saying. So, yeah. so if you have that concern, then you think, okay, well, how do we prevent people from doing that? Well, maybe there should be a whole thing to getting a gun. Maybe you should be required to undergo training, a background check, um, <laughs> all mm -hmm. sorts of things that would keep anybody safe, not just your hypothetical producer but see this is the but we can't do that because the moneyed forces are drowning out our voices and i'm pretty sure that's what they do in commie stan anyway so i don't know it sounded like something that was <laughs> that was an argument that i didn't really believe in uh so i don't know but i mean tamara that that's the point though is is it's like yeah of course i'm, I'm sort of trying to take the step away from it for the less famous person and Look, a lot of crazy things happen in the course of any week, you know? So, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked, you know? I mean, when you read about celebrities who have stalkers and you're like, really, they have a stalker? So, you know, I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, crazy crazy is as crazy does, it's, you know? That's true, that's true. It's just hard for me to, wrap, like, consider that somebody... Because if you're going to go after somebody who's not really that public of a figure because they donated to Trump's campaign, like, you could just go after, you know, your uncle that is a Trump supporter, too. How you did know, you like know my uncle was a Trump supporter? <laughs> well, Christian, come on, <laughs> look true. at you. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a great point. <laughs> Got a lot of family in South Jersey. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, Scott, uh, your thoughts on, because sort of the, the three of us have all already talked about this, just your thoughts on this in general. I'm just wondering what you think about you know, yes, they, the, this call for, like, let's find out who all these people are. And, again, this came up not that long ago uh, because that one was the other Castro, right, that uh, posted the list. And, mm -hmm. whoops, it turned out that some of them actually had supported him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about all of this? Look, again, like like I've said, it's, it's public. So if someone wanted to find out the information, they could dig. And I understand you're saying you're making it easier for people. But... Um, but to Tamara's point, too, again, if you're going to make a splash because you're crazy and you want to go after someone, if you're going after a, a, a producer who's not highly known, then, you know, that takes out your your notoriety from that. Um, whereas if you're going after a celebrity, I think, you know, th there's a lot of that stuff. And I know they were saying in the White House they were trying to equate it to being closeted and gay and back in the day and someone forcing out. I'm like, those are totally different scenarios <laughs> of course there. course they go there. Um that you know than than what this is uh but again it's public and if you're going to donate then again you have to understand and that's on any side like you're it, that's on the democratic side too that's you know in in rural alabama and you're donating to the democrat or to doug jones running for the senate next year i mean you're 
you have to understand that it is public and people can look it up. So you're taking that risk if that's something you feel strongly about. And I think you should, um, as you're right, uh, to participate in democracy if you have the money to do that and that's what you feel. But... You know, you put into it's so sad that that's like to cap if you have the money to. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what's sad because yeah, if you have you the have money extra, to buy influence, if, yeah. if you have disposable income, which is the sad thing because that that is the that is the problem is that it's not even disposable just, income. Just throwing Businesses that out there. Businesses use money in politics as almost an investment. It's well, not no, even, that, not yes, that part, and and like you said, going to super PACs and donating a hundred million dollars to your super PAC of choice. Uh, but you know, the smaller donations and the people that are giving. Twenty dollars, a hundred dollars, those type of things for a candidate they feel passionate about. But it's another thing when super PAC and you could do super PAC and give your hundred million and Why you don't keep it more we... anonymous by starting a company that no one knows, you know, that it's you. That I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's other ways, sure. especially celebrities that can do that and start out an LLC of whatever, and nobody knows that's the celebrity. So why don't we take advantage of the fact that they compared it to uh, being closeted gay person and encourage them to have a Republican? Uh, super PAC pride parade. So that way they all trot, trot themselves out there on a parade and there's our list. See? It kills so two birds come, with one you've stone. You've come up with be prideful no. of, of your, your donation to uh, Trump. Quick side question that is a bit of a tangent. Chelsea, more damaging. Super PACs or super delegates? Oh. Um, oh so, <laughs> Scott has his answer. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with super packs. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, hundred uh, percent. No, I no. I think that uh, more damage can be done. Uh, Tamara, do you have a different opinion on this? No, nope. because uh, I specifically asked you because you know super delegates. I don't know might hurt a candidate that the establishment doesn't want to get the nomination. Not that any candidate that you supported at any point in the last four years was somebody who may or may not have had the nomination stolen from them. I just want that's the only reason I asked because it does seem like it seems like cheating when you have the super delegates because then it's like you're just like nah, but your votes don't count. You know, it's like an electoral college that wasn't put into the constitution. I mean, I I, I don't think. That the way the system mm-hmm. is set up right now with super delegates is a good one, but the super PAC system is even worse, right. much more damaging, right. much more harmful. Mm-hmm. Which one do you think President Beto would? <laughs> sorry. Which one do you think President Beto would get rid of first? I, I tried. I tried really hard that time. You don't have to actually answer that question. I mean, I think Beto is on the you know money and politics. Mm-hmm. Thing gets it, understands it. I, I and that I he don't, would that he accepts it when it, it is it is handed no, to him. No, I oh, okay. I believe he is on the side of restoring democracy and getting out the undue influence of money and, and politics. I believe he's pretty strong about that. But see, this is the problem: is that so many other things have sort of clouded the the platform that I don't even I'm not even sure that that's where he stands on it or how strongly he stands on it because so many other things like you know gun rights have taken precedence and I understand that you know in his home state in his home um, home city that you know the shooting happened and so that's why he's all talking about guns but that's that's a symptom of the money and politics problem so tell me again where you stand on that bigger problem and then that should get the votes. I think the problem is is when the the parties send out these surveys to um, to people and say which are the 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 issues that are most important to you, and then they say those issues over and over and over. What I don't think yet that the American public really gets is that money and politics isn't just one of the issues. It is the the grandparent of all the other issues, and that if we can address that one and restore democracy in other ways, that uh, that the other issues will then get sorted out, or we have a chance at sorting them out, but we don't have any chance at anything unless we get rid of money in politics or you know put in Elizabeth Warren as Senate Majority Leader, because I think that that would Again, fix isn't, everything. Again, didn't Bernie pretty much say that in the last, that was like his closing statement in one of the last debates? Yes, and Chelsea has a back tat of that speech, and she <laughs> likes to you know, make sure that she doesn't forget it. But even Bernie, I've been hearing him mm-hmm. still say, we need a political revolution of young people g- getting involved young in the Young people, political... like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> but yeah. but that, that message like is any, like... Anyone under 70. Rise up, 47-year-olds. <laughs> but but hey. we got that already. Yeah. We got that. We got the involved in politics yeah. part. Okay, but... So so enough with that. We need to get back to the underlying message of all the ways to clean up the, call it cleaning up corruption, restoring democracy, whatever it is, 
That's what I want to hear about. That's what I want the American people to understand is the most important issue. Some people are like, I've seen memes of where there's a giant wave as though the, the climate is the biggest wave of all the other issues. But again, you can have the biggest wave of the climate going to you know, ruin all of us on the, uh, the other issues. But the <clears throat> issue even above that, mm -hmm. the hurricane above the giant wave of the climate crisis is the role of money in politics. Well, if you don't have the money the in politics, you can address yeah. whatever... <clears throat> Excuse me. Whatever issues you consider to be bigger than that, well, that makes sense. I, I was gonna say, if you don't have a climate or you don't have a planet, then that probably does supersede. But the we politics. can't. But we you can't can, even can do anything it about it. Right. No, I get it. But yeah. uh, so speaking of the climate, uh, Tamara, uh, tomorrow night uh, CNN is going to have uh, town hall debates. I believe uh, ten candidates over seven hours. I can't uh, wait. My qu <laughs> <laughs> all right. My question is, uh, Tamara, have you have you taken the whole day off? Uh, are you are, are you having people over? Is it going to be a catered event? Uh, or are you going to just DVR and maybe, you know, look through the, you know, how excited are you for this is what I'm really asking. I got asking. my office uh, pool, candidate <laughs> pool, see who's going to uh, say uh, certain buzzwords within the first, um, right. in the, the first uh, quarter. And I don't know. Well, here's what we're going to see. We're going to hear about how Elizabeth Warren has adopted Jay Inslee's platform. And then after that, all I want to hear I, about the climate debate is how they plan on restoring our democracy so that we can do something about it. That's what I'm I'm going to be listening through it all. And I, and I need to watch it all because the clips that are going to come out of it, uh, come out of it on the news are all going to be climate related. But I'm not listening for the specific answers that they give on climate. I'm listening for what are they saying about money and politics and restoring our democracy so that we can do something about the climate? So, yeah, you want to come over? I'm throwing a party. Well, I was going to say I can't wait for you to tell me how it was. Because uh, I think it's from uh, 5 to midnight Eastern. So that's 2 to 9 our time. Perfect. She's, she's, serving, she's serving Dim a Crab Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would no, be imitation it, crab. Yeah, imitation, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I actually uh, like imitation crab, but nicely played. Yeah, yeah. We're, all, we're all having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, uh, you have those seven hours carved out, or um, are you going to let Chelsea uh, tell you? I'll let uh, Chelsea give me the I points. can't wait. <laughs> Because I'm listening for what's actually important. No, I want to hear it too, Well, uh, Ryan in the booth has uh, brought up a story that uh, I didn't have, but it's worth pointing out that Julian Castro has rolled out a $10 trillion plan to fight climate change. And I think that I, I haven't read the plan, obviously, because I just read the headline eight seconds ago. But when you put $10 trillion price tags onto things, you're really banking on, I don't know, 52% of Americans who voting Americans care that much about it. Because $10 trillion isn't usually something you throw out in the in the campaign. Uh, do I, you do you think? And let's take out of consideration for a second where he's polling and how likely he is to be the nominee. But a ten trillion dollar plan to fight climate change could be what it takes. But uh, how tough of a sell is that for the American? I people? mean, I think whoever came up with that headline, you know, I'm sure there's much more important things about it than the cost. Should we of it. read the headline but for the if listeners? But every uh, or, well, I said it. It's or if every dollars, plan yeah. that every politician came up with was in included the cost, like every time we, when the idea to go into Afghanistan was floated, was first floated, did 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 it list how many trillions of dollars we were going to spend there? No, and it probably no. should have, yeah. and we should probably get you know a running tally of mm -hmm. it every month because if we did, our eyeballs would explode out of our heads. We'd well, that's be so what, exactly shocked. why we don't have it. Because, so yeah. so when. And I, I, so when we, I hear things like this, you know, ten trillion dollar plan. Well, yeah, that sounds like a crap ton of money. But then let's also <laughs> look at say crap load of of uh, what we've spent on other things, and that's not in one year. So it, those when when they use just those big numbers, oh, so it's only like a that, trillion dollars in, a year. Apparently, it's within uh, the next ten years. He okay. Aims yeah. To for just uh, ten trillion dollars in federal, state, local, and private investments, the campaign estimates that the influx of the investment will create ten million jobs over the decade. Okay, so see there that that That's is a, a whole lot, lot of jobs. What I don't know exactly what uh, what those jobs are, but uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's not hard to think of what they would be. But I think the focus on 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 the cost. I don't think that's not a bad thing. We should know how much it costs, but I wish we would be told the cost of everything, everything else. Right. Why is it our spending? Why is it that only when it comes to the climate mm -hmm. or, you know, 
healthcare or that there's know. a price tag on it. But when we want to, I mean, there's so well, many things. And let's point out the headline comes from CNN, who's going to spend all this time on climate change. And I think that it's worth mentioning because. Look, if it was from Fox News, people would be like, well, clearly they're going for an audience that doesn't like climate change. So they, so CNN thought it was important enough to put it in the headline. Well, and, just one more detail I yeah. just want to add real quick. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Um, so I said by 2030, uh, apparently he's focusing on the racial impacts of climate change and that the people most affected by the climate change are most likely people of color and more vulnerable communities and that uh, that's going to help power to mobilize in America. That's yeah, not going to help. But the worst part is that Prince Harry's going to have to start flying commercial. You know, I mean, that's he really said the he's problem. Gonna, okay, but I, so I think... <laughs> <laughs> you were about to defend him. Anyway, go ahead. We're almost out of time. But I, 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 think to, I think to say that, people who care about the climate crisis sort of already know that. If you're trying to get people on board with caring about the climate crisis, True. talking mm-hmm. about yeah. the impact on minority people... Those people don't care. You're, in fact, alienating them more because it's like, oh, that just affects them. That doesn't affect me. I got to be worried about myself first. It affects us all. And so I I don't, that's one of the reasons why I would pick um, Marianne Williamson over Julian Castro is because too much focus on um, on, on race. And I it just... Why? It's just so well, I mean, unnecessary. I, and, and we have to wind up. But I mean, yeah, just focus on the fact that it, it, it's the climate that is affecting everyone on the planet. And, you know, you can you can break down those other things. I don't but think he needs to do that. I think the other I think the people that are informed about the, the subject, they know that already. He shouldn't be saying that. I, he I think he thinks he's helping himself. Right. To, to, to. Yeah. But I think it's backfiring, and or at least it does with me. Mm-hmm. And so I would replace. Now I want to replace him more than <laughs> Beto on tomorrow's stage. Well, you'll see. Mm-hmm. You'll see. You'll mm-hmm. see. He and Beto tomorrow night on CNN, and uh, Chelsea's having everyone over. So just tweet mm-hmm. at her and you can see where uh, she donated. Yeah. So then you-, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've actually withheld. I think. I think I haven't. I don't think I've donated to anybody. I have not so, yet either. I am. I'm. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Hold I mean, I'm not, I'm not giving money to a politician. I don't, I don't think it's going to help anything. But uh, let us know if uh, if you are. Uh, I'll donate to whoever stops sending me emails. Oh, <laughs> that would be good. Uh, anyway, so that's it for tonight. But uh, we will uh, be back. Some of us will be back next Thursday, the twelfth at ten Pacific. But uh, just keep an eye on our Twitters to uh, make sure that that's when you'll find us. Chelsea, where can people find you? At Chelsea Glacia. And you can find me at Christian DMZ. Scott Moore, where can people and find you? You can find me at SMAN80. That's SMAN80. And Tamara. You can find me at Stop Sending Me Those Emails, Warren. <laughs> no, com. At, at, at hey Tamara underscore. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks to everybody in the chat. We will uh, see you next week. Thanks. Bye. 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 Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 